Good evening, Final Fantasy Randomizer fans, and welcome to another match in the 2021 Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament. I am Demon RHK in the booth with Jat. We are bringing you some hot action from Pod I, not the iPod. That's Pod E. This is Pod I, the Iron Gold Pod. Tonight we're bringing you Gouda and Chan again. We've got some hot action going on. Chan again sitting in the two and O, looking for the perfect sweep of the pod, while Gouda one and O, looking to punch their ticket into brackets. It's going to be a good race. Jad, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic. This is a race that I've been looking forward to all week, and I am super excited to be in the booth to comms it. Gouda, a past graduate of our Duckling program, but almost two years ago or something crazy like that. Uh, he's now known as our Iron Gall Commissioner, so our Heavy Metal Championship of the World. He is the Commissioner, uh, a very experienced runner, though, and his favorite enemy, Unleash Warmech, going up against Chanigan, a relatively new runner to the community, but absolutely no slouch for putting up some killer times in practice. Fun facts, whoop, 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 and his favorite enemy is the Imp. So, yeah, Chanigan came flying out of the gate and is really looking for a win here, but Gouda, this is going to be a four-force required Warmech, no Massa um, seed, so... Some spicy business happening here, and you gotta think like this type of party might favor the Iron Gall Commissioner. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, with some of the crazy stuff that, that uh, gets thrown around on Iron Gall, uh, the more things that you tack onto a seed, the more comfortable Gouda's is gonna be here. So, quick info on your four force: we've got double red mage in front of you. The red mages are packing plus twenty vitality. The white mage, poor lonely white mage, gets a plus twenty hit point buff at the start. The thief, because why not? They get fifteen luck. So, zoom zoom, everything's going bye bye. Yep. Uh, so, I guess a couple things, of course, if you haven't watched the pods before, please feel free to ask some questions in the chat. We'll be going over some of the flags as they come along, but what we're looking for here, four orbs lit, key and loot. So the four orbs are in the top left of the tracker, the key and the loot in the top right, and that will be their ticket to go and try and take on the final fiends, the fiend refights in the Temple of Fiends Revisited. What they're going to be looking for, though, I don't know. There's a couple different strategies you could take here. If there's good magic, especially like a level one fade, they could definitely be going with like four man strats and really just trying to fade their way through Topher, but otherwise you're probably looking at like a two-man with the Thief and a Red Mage maybe to get that Thief some extra levels for some survivability. Yeah, more than likely that this is going to be an end up as a Thief grind, so we're going to look for a good tile to get a Thief Ninja up, and we're off. So let's see this critical level one white magic. Heal three, life two, I like it. Yeah, so that life two, of course, is red wizard lock, but the thief is basically guaranteed to promote, just because the weapons are so bad for the thief that the best it can equip is a coral sword, uh, with no massa in the pool either. So, you know, the fact that life two is red wizard only, not as big of a deal as it would be in some other flags, or with some other parties, sorry. Right, Copper's rolled up to plus two. For level one black magic, we don't have any AoE damaging. We do have binary kill spells in the form of Bane, which is still going to be really solid early. That all should get us through pirates with probably no more than two casts. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, kind of pretty decent magic. Heal three, very, very, not underrated spell, but saves a ton of time and is like a really nice convenient spell right up there with something like Warp um, in terms of the ability to save some time throughout the seed, so... Um, Silver plus two in the lower left chest. Gouda manages to get all the way in up to Topher on the on the run. Resets out of the chest, picks up 10k from the top. I think we're going to keep that. Yeah. Okay, it looks like Chanigan's going to make the same decision. Now, Gouda made a nice veteran move there to reset out. We'll see if Chanigan does the same thing or if he takes an encounter. Uh, looks like he's going to take an adi probably one additional encounter here. Those spiders and maybe something else. Yeah, so Gouda was off the hard reset there. Looks like Gouda's gonna go out and save again, just to be safe? I think he reset, I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, he, he actually took out the spiders with the... with the Bane, I thought. Oh, maybe something would have happened there on a second encounter, but we're just gonna run away from the spiders this time, keep our four Banes for, uh, Garland. Ooh, might need him. Uh, Chanigan 0 for 2 in the first round. Yeah, Gouda playing very safe. Chanigan, though, could be punished here if these Banes don't land. There it goes, though. Th this Bane, sh you know, I would feel very comfortable with four casts of Bane on Garland. Yeah, the this early in the game, there shouldn't be anything that holds up to it short of, you know, undead and stuff. We get, a cr we get the King's Crown. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Crabcake saying in chat that uh, Gouda thought he used the Tent, and then he clicked Reset, but he actually picked up a Heal Pot, and then used the Heal Pot, then Reset, so then he lost his save. So just purely by accident. Okay, so, you know. Womp. 
I like the play to pick up more tents here. Um, oh yeah, with the with this nice run off the power cycle, yeah, I definitely like it. Guda going to go and try and kill Astos with Bane? Oh, uh, looks like Chanigans had it that way, definitely. Or sorry, sorry, Chanigans trying to go kill a Astos with Bane. It can work, but Astos has quite high M def, so. Oh dear. Uh, so the ogres go stop Bane time. Hmm. And Chanigan decides it is perhaps ill-advised to go to um, do the crown turn in now. So, gonna go check out the crystal. It's interesting that he's making this play, but the fact that, you know, you're always gonna be looking for chests until you find a ribbon and a katana with this party, basically, for sure, I means some extra chests aren't that bad, but they got so much money in that Temple of Fiends chest that I don't know if the Matoya play was, like, strictly needed. Well, you never know how high that vendor item's gonna roll if it shows up. True. It will be cheaper in the um, in the earlier towns, though. All right, Guda gonna give us our first look at level two. Wall, I guess. <laughs> Poor man's ribbon. That's an appropriate way to describe that. And uh, fire two, I guess, is also uh, it gets about the same reaction. Fire two is probably if you're gonna see a level two spell early, it's probably the best one you're gonna want to see because the two places you're gonna be going. Uh, well, two of the three places you could go, both Ice and uh, Marsh, are going to be full of undead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to be casting Bane against them. That will not work very well. Okay. The tail, a really nice pickup for the runners here. This party is very dependent on promotion, once again with the Thief, so picking up an early tail, no one is unhappy about that. Yeah, with no mass in the, pu in the pool, uh, tail is 100% a requirement. Especially with no, like, level 1 fade, as kind of mentioned before, so... Uh, picking up some chain armor, though, that's really nice. Yeah, something that's underrated about the Thief is not only... Uh, about promotion with the Thief is not only do their weapons suck, but their armor is terrible, too, for the Thief. So being able to promote to the Ninja just unlocks so much better armor. And, uh, like, you know, the Thief can't even equip chain mail, which is ridiculous. Uh, chain is gonna hawk off the heel helm, uh, pick up some chain armor for the Red Mages. Uh, the Pro Rings rolled down 3, not great. No, but at least they'll still give you, I think, five absorb at that rate, and they could provide protection from death. So, which uh, is the most important fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, a question in chat, you know what the blurses are? So yeah, so we quickly mentioned them. It, they are basically vitality on the red mage and white mage, and then the thief has even more luck. So now you can really get mad when it fails to run. Right. So it looks like we got some divergence. Chanigan's gonna be headed back. We're gonna make this uh, this western play again. Uh, Gouda is cutting through, going right down to our free item. Fire 2 will work against Astos. It won't be fast, but it will work. Assuming we have, you know, four casts of it. I don't know if we're up to four casts, but we've got a couple. And we found weapons. Not good weapons, but we found weapons. Nothing in the item shop in Crescent. We're not even going to bother checking the magic right now. We're going right over, pick up our item. Ooh, the chime. Yeah, so Sky, where the floater always seems to be in these uh, flag sets. But we'll, you know, we have to wait and see. Now, the chime is a particularly nasty item to get early because you sometimes, that means you have to go into Mirage to get the cube or something really gross. Uh, but we have to hope for our runner's sake that that's not the case. Yeah, especially with that required war mech. All right, so we're up against Astos. We're swinging. We're swinging. We're fire towing. It's a slow grind. Greatly puffed with the quick twitch math, but the fire two doing slightly better than 32 times four. So uh, this will get Astos down barely. <laughs> the HP here is clamped uh, 100 to 150. So it's pretty... Oh, is he out of fire twos? That's not good. Yeah, he only had four casts. Oof. Um, the HP is clamped, so it's relatively known what their HPs are, but, you know, just slightly not great rolls. Uh, rolls. Not sure what that was, but I think it was a mage plus four. Mage plus four will help a lot. 
absolutely unlimited casts of the Fire 2. Also, note that we can see that Astos actually does have the floater here, so that means that Chanagood could end up skipping Martian Ice, which could be a nice advantage here. One of the two is still going to be a question mark, but the other will have the ship, so this is definitely, this could definitely be a heads up play. Exactly. It will actually be quite to Chanigan's detriment if one of those items is like, you know, the rod or the key or something, and then Chanigan ends up full clearing everything else prior to it. But for example, if Gouda just gets um, the white shirt here or something like that, that could be a big edge to Chanigan. Or the ruby, even worse. The ruby would be awful. Yeah, your best case scenario is this turns out to be Ruby and one of these, and of course the other one has to be the ship, and you're completely free of both these dungeons. Yeah. Okay, that is pretty decent level um, 3 magic. I mean, two level 3 elementals and Brack? Yeah, I'm not going to turn down. Now, hopefully, for Chanigan's sake, there's no fade here. If he got too many slots, it could have been problematic. This white mage, though, with some solid utility with that invis too. Uh, the white mage hasn't really like screamed that I am required though, with the red mages already having access to life two, wall, and heal three. Yeah, the white mage is. This is probably going to be a red mage and uh, beef ninja party, as you had said before, uh, just because, especially with all the magic we have available to us. Nuka four. Yeah, I was just about to say that Fade could turn that, but then Nuke, in the same level as Fade, that Fade is basically not important anymore. Yeah, uh, Guda pulled the ship out of the top of Marsh here, so that's going to be a big uh, ability to skip for Chanigan. Yeah, that's just basically a straight, straight time loss, but if Chanigan does end up uh, you know, needing to go to ice, and Gouda knows that there's actually a chance for a good item to be there, that, that could still be an edge for Gouda. So we'll have to see if Chanigan ends up clearing Marsh like way later in the seed. Yeah, if you're trying on that desperate hunt for, say, the cube or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, we're back to fire two on Astos. Will the ro rolls be better? That's the 32 right there. That's not what you want to see. Yeah. We need an unresisted fire too, but it's just not likely because uh, Astos, once again, has very high MDEF. Oh, he hey. gets it. That's six casts compared to four. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah, so that's a feel bad for Gouda. He knows that that's not what he wanted to see there. Chanigan finding the uh, flat rolled gold bracelets for 44k down here in Crescent. Not great. Uh, Good heading over. We're probably going to pick up their ship here as well. So you got the airship. You got the world. The world's your oyster. I. This has always been a, a pretty hotly debated topic here. Where do you go first? Oh, that's, this is the easy Sarda. Then promotion, probably. Then it gets a little bit more complicated. I, I'm, I need to think a little bit about where I would go after Sarda promotion, but I think Sarda promotion is definitely a good start. Yeah, unless Sarda's pulling up the Oxiel, I think it's definitely ordeals. Yeah, I might want to check for level five for warp, but the red mage has, uh, but the red mage has such. Uh, no, they could learn a decent amount there. I think I'd want to check for warp at least um, in, in Melmon because the the red wizard can learn everything there, right? So yeah, so you definitely go, and we got a, a good going right to promotion. Chain again, picking up the cube from Sarda first. Going straight to promotion also is logical, but I do like the the Sarda check first because there's just you know it's basically there. It's six point half a dozen. There is free at this point. Yeah. Uh, Chan again gonna come over. I assume straight to promotion as well. Yeah. Now the question is gonna be, are we gonna get some cardio loot? Chan again's gonna look cardio loot first. Hmm. Interesting. I, I've been doing some VOD reviews recently of some of these runs, and, you know, these Cardia chests are not required. Yes, you're going to want to open some boxes, but the thing is, you could get your money on a trap tile, you could find a katana in ordeals. 
these boxes are just giving up time to your opponent if they don't end up checking it. But looks like Gouda has the same idea, so... You know. With with the hard requirement for a sword and one of the, what, three swords that you want to possibly see out of the pool, yeah. or one of the four swords out of the pool, so there's only three left, so there's two katanas and a four pool. Uh, it, it's what you're doing here as Gouda. You know, you come in, you take your prom you take your promotion, you save in the air, you reset if, the, if there's nothing in there. Yeah. I think it makes some amount of sense. Uh, I, I would like to see maybe an Earth play as well. Ooh, that Ice Armor is quite nice, speaking of better ninja armor, but... I think I would, ooh, and speaking of Endgame Sword, that Vorpal plus two will absolutely do the trick. Um, that's not quite as good, but it's fairly, it's close enough to a vanilla katana to be an excellent sword. Yeah, it's got the high crit rate. You could definitely run that to the end of the game. You also picked up an Ice Armor, even though it rolled down in there. Um, I find a Flame Shield to go with that, and two ribbons, one ribbon even. Yeah. And, I, and I'm feeling good. For sure. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to go like Earth into Melmond here, maybe. So just go to Earth Cave to get a couple levels. Not Don't dive Earth, but just like check the spikes, for example. And then go to Melmond for Warp, potentially. And then go to Ordeals, Waterfall, on Onrack Continent. All that stuff, I think, is pretty reasonable at that point. If I'm Chanigan, though, I'm trying to avoid Ice and Marsh at all costs. Yeah. Uh, looks like Gouda's gonna say, while I'm doing this and doing my post-promotion stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up all my spells from my ninja, and don't blame him there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something to be said about the mental, kind of like, removing mental stress, and like having to remember things in the middle of a seed. And by promoting, equipping all your armor, equipping all your weapons, and then doing your spell buying, you kind of just like got in the promotion box checked off, and you never have to worry about it again, which is really, really nice. Yeah, you never have to worry about, oh, well, I can't learn the spell now, but I can learn it later. I have to come back. And then you forget about a 4 4 Topher. <laughs> exactly. And suddenly you're diving Topher without fast, and you're like, ah, oh, crap. Yeah. I I want them to, um, I like, for example, Chanigan remembering to pick up uh, Life 2 on his Red Mages, and also Gouda, if he ha doesn't go do that right away. That's something that's really important. It can really, really hurt if your White Mage goes down or something. Or even worse, you want your White Mage to go down, right? Right, because you you're going to want either a three man or more than more than likely a two man with the one wizard one ninja uh yeah. once you find that spike tile uh chanting in the waterfall here i mean there's some stuff that gives some good experience i like it Ooh, asher pointing on a chat gouda with another reset um error here uh, resetting out of elfland elfland is one of the most expensive towns in terms of time spent to go buy all that magic so that's not ideal for uh gouda here but you know nothing nothing critical yet yeah, it's the the second worst town to navigate, right behind uh, Gaia. Yeah. Um, Chanigan, what, going with Bane Strats, unfortunately, Poison does not work on these uh, undead mud galls. They're not actually undead enemies, but you can, you can think of them. They, they resist Poison. Yeah, um, the original Final Fantasy plays a lot like, you know, you know totally not a complete ripoff of D&D &D with spell levels. Um, so these are constructs. They are not living. They are exactly. not, they don't have to breathe. Poison Spoke does not Okay, does get away. And luckily, lots of life and heal three, as kind of mentioned before. Gouda picking up that free cube, as kind of expected, so... Yeah, pretty pretty even out of the early game. Chanigan does need to pick up some levels. That's making this waterfall dive scarier than it needs to be, but... Yeah, it definitely took some nasty shots there against... Uh... You know, I'm not unhappy taking a giant iguana tile to like 12 or 13. Yeah, exactly. I think that early grind to, not grind even, but just like getting some levels, because they're so easy to get. Like up to 10 will take three, four fights. You know, I think that's really good. Ooh, on Gouda's side though, we find double uh, Gersharks, which if they roll low HP can be a nice uh, way to one or two man grind. Yeah, absolutely. We have a key from the robot. That's an excellent pickup. Yeah, if nothing else, if you are really heavy into looting, it opens up immediately. What, like, oh, oh that's an eye. Okay, oh, we have many fights here that we want, we care about. Earth, with all of the grind tiles. Yeah, so this, it, was this inner hall of giants, or was this the actual trap tile? Uh, it, it, so the first trap tile in the hall of giants was the double Gersharks. And then the second tile was the eye. So value hallway. Yep. 
like these Gershocks have a decent chunk of EXP or of HP, but it's not like atrocious. But I think the eye is the gonna be the the, the grind of choice here. Yeah, but the Gersharks hit harder and make things die faster. True. If you want to kill off some party members, the Gersharks are there for you. Yeah, this is... If he could get one nice crit on... No, not that Light Warrior, the other Light Warrior. <laughs> so I, I kind of mentioned it before, but like, yeah, the, the Earth play early here just to get some levels and some money... It does make a lot of sense just to kind of get off the ground. With the early floater, you kind of forget that you're usually getting a few levels in like marsh or ice or whatever when you're stuck in the inner sea, but with the floater this early, you're just not getting those levels. So navigating the world outside of the inner sea at level six is kind of scary. Now, here's the question. You're on an eye tile. You're already promoted. Do you sit on it until you're done? Um... With the Vorpal already, you know, you can kind of have an idea about whereabouts you want to sit. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to sit on this eye for a while. I think I would probably take it quite far, trying to, like, maybe get the Red Mage into the mid-20s, like, low, low to mid-20s, because the Vitality means it doesn't need, like, a ton of levels to get over 400 HP. And then the Thief, maybe to the high 20s. Yeah, because you're going to pick up some... some levels just by proxy along the way so yeah. i feel like i feel like you get the red mage 20 to 22 you yeah. get the ninja 26 to 28 yeah that's exactly what i'm thinking as well uh will chanigan go to the hollow giants okay key turn in makes a lot of sense i feel like chanigan has to go to hollow giants like if he's checking northwest castle just for grinds i feel like earth is such a obvious play with three grind tiles available there. He might check Northwest, or sorry, not Northwest Castle. He might check uh, Toflock first, though. We got an herb. We'll have to see. So the, the chain continues. Now, if, the, if one of these turns into the rod, yeah, Channing is probably going right to herb, and we'll probably find this eye immediately. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the rod will trigger it, because I don't think he wants to dive down Earth yet, but I agree. Like, either way, he might just go to Earth immediately anyways. We'll, we'll have to see. But first, herb. <laughs> Yeah, first herb. It's one of those gotcha things. It's just, you, you get the rod and you go, oh yeah, rod, or, or rod, earth, that place has trap tiles. Ah, uh, I see, I see. It's the Ch and Chanigan, sure enough, going to do the full loot here. We're going to raid the, the Elven Arbory. Ooh. Katana plus two. Okay, I think the Vorpal and a Dragon five. I think we have three swords for three Light Warriors. Yep, that is a lot of good swords. Now, a note here is that... It's kind of unlikely that Gouda might not get that, because Gouda's going to be feeling pretty good after his grind and going to think, okay, I don't need to open that many more boxes, I just kind of need a ribbon, so I'm going to be opening ribbons around al along the way. But like that Katana plus two is much better than the, um, the Vorpal plus two. Yeah, there is, for the fact that there's no mass in this seed, all the swords have rolled very, very favorably. Yeah. One note, though, just taking a look at our tracker tonight, um... I don't know whether we... Oh, we'll just call him John for now. Um, there is no fast or temper yet. And that is a little bit concerning. Yeah, I don't... I don't know how much more we're going to get. I think my... Uh, again, I don't run red mate, run Mage's Red Wizard specifically because, you know, what are spell permissions? I think they get one of the level seven black slots and I, I think three or all four when they're promoted to level sixes. Uh, so the Red Wizards will get all, so they get four at Melman, that's the key one right now. Whatever's at Melman is super important. They get one at Crescent and one at Gaia. So, it's Melman or Bust for the most part here. But Melman, you know, has a decent chance of, of containing what you're looking for. Uh, at yeah, least one of them. So Demon Frog saying he doesn't like Chanigan coming back to the Sphinx, and I kind of agree, but if he just takes this to 12 or something, there's no problem. You know what I mean? It's just if he decides that this is what he's going to sit on. Uh, but... Yeah, the... Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, but the Sphinx doesn't seem to want to die, which is actually to Chanigan's benefit, because maybe he'll decide to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those... Sphinxes are okay for an early grind. Like, I, I, I'm a big proponent, and I've said this with other commentators, of taking a grind to 10, 10 to 15 to get all of your light warriors in a position where you don't have to worry about them and where they're going to do more than just die to a stiff paper cut in Toker. Yeah. 
I think this Sphinx being mega evasive is actually like Chanigan's best friend right now, because hopefully it convinces him that he does not want to keep taking this for 650 EXP. Yeah, goodbye. Let's go to Earth, Chanigan. If you're voting for Chanigan, <laughs> he needs to go to Earth ASAP here. Yeah, we're, uh, more eyes are dying. Uh, that was 2400 on two light warriors, nobody gained a level, so we're probably up toward 20 at this point. Chanigan is going to find the Gershark on the outside. Now, interestingly, Chanigan's actually much better positioned to take the eyes and um, these Gersharks just because uh, he has the better swords. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. But Gouda did take a little bit to get off the ground. Yeah, now he's swinging pretty well now. We're 22 on both of these Light Warriors. So um, I think at this point it was where I'd consider moving the Red Mage up to the top slot, try to get him down. I 100% agree. Maybe the... even risk taking another Gershark fight? Yeah, without the plus Vitality, um, I would be hesitant to, like, let the... I would keep the Red Mage up for longer, but with the plus Vitality, you can definitely let them die off a little earlier. There is definitely a consideration, though, for, like, going outside and saving first before you down off the Red Mage. Just, like, save your grind, and then go back in, but... It better to save and waste the time coming back in than lose an entire 50 exactly. minute grind. Yeah. Um, okay, it looks like this is going to be time to leave. Yeah, look at that Red Mage HP. 454 HP. Yeah, that, that by the time we get to end game, if they're 26, 27, that they can eat a nuke and probably a, one of the level 4 elemental skills on top of that. Yeah. So let's see if Chanigan makes the really nice heads up play that Gouda did to try and kill off his characters with the Gersharks instead of the eyes. Because if he doesn't, it's going to take forever for this grind to kick off. So he's going with a little bit more of a whole party approach. Gouda decided pretty quickly to go down to the two men. And I mean, we basically said right at the beginning, the two men's like kind of the obvious party, I guess, to go with at this point. Um, we'll see what Chanigan decides, though. If we're going to commit to a full party, I would have liked to have seen Melman first for fast, because you've got the weaponry to support full party. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. a Dragon 5, a Giant 4, a Vorpal 2, and a Katana 2. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only that, we also have Nuke and Fade at level 4 as well. Like, this is a this is a well enough equipped party that a full party at 24 will probably be, a, be sufficient if you have fast. Falcona correctly pointing out the katana also not being impressive here. Basically, the Vorpal and the katana, katana doing nothing to these eyes when they don't crit. Kind of, it's quite sad to watch eyes uh, not die in one shot to end game weapons. But that is, you know, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, this is. You see, for those of you who are like, "Wow, these eyes aren't dying." This is what happens when you don't run a black belt. This is what happens when you don't have just the OP. I punch it, it immediately dies because I hit 21 class. Okay, so Chanigan's done with the eyes. For now, at least. What is the game plan? Okay, it's going to be pick up the TNT. Maybe... So, each key item that they pick up is worth an additional 5% um, EXP. So maybe Chanigan's just thinking, I'm going to go get a few key items first, and then I'm going to come back to the eye, finish it later. And, and what I would really like to do if he does do that is to see him kill off characters as he's finishing up various places before he comes back to do his grind if that makes sense so like for example maybe he does the tnt and then he goes and checks melmond and then he does ordeals and then maybe at the end of ordeals he's trying to kill off his white mage and his red mage so when he goes to his grind he already has them down yeah, I feel like you just get whatever overworld or whatever other stuff you want to do. You do Volcano, and you just don't heal two of the characters on the yeah. way down, and then you just come here after. Yeah, agreed. Uh, but where are we going? So we're just turn. Good is going to turn to the TNT. Chanigan's headed over to check Crescent again. Uh, are we... No? Checking that black magic? White magic? He looked. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Exit and ruse. Prioritizing exit makes a lot of sense here. I don't think he has levels on the white mage to use it yet, though. 16 is what he needs, and I think he's just slightly below that. Yeah, I think he got up to like 13 or 14 here. Uh, we're going to look at level 5 here. Uh, white magic's not impressive. Here's the moment of truth, though. Faster temper. 
temper. Okay. T not it's fast is what you would have preferred. Temper, at least you've got one of the two here. Uh, so the the hail mary is now that fast is a Gaia. Yeah. Or, or um. Yes. The, yeah. Faster is that guy because we've already seen the Crescent Lake magic. Um, Chanigan still opening boxes. This is basically explicitly a check for a ribbon. I would guess at this point. There's there's no swords left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel like one. You want one ribbon here. Um, for one of your red mages, and then you can just like lean on wall off the white mage until it dies for everybody else. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so moment of truth for, uh, we get some hoorays. Moment of truth for Gouda here. This is really important. There's only one item left that's super important for these runners, which is the Oxail. That's the last item to go mode for them. And if the Oxail is in ice, it's very likely Chanigan's going to full clear everything. If Chanigan doesn't, if this is the white shirt or something, though, that's really bad for Gouda because Chanigan's probably never going to give Gouda back the time that he spent in Martian Ice Cave. Yeah, this is where this is where trying to be heads up and seeing about fading these inner sea locations can get, save you a ton of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Chanigan continuing with the four man. These, I mean, they're gonna die pretty quick to the Gur sharks if if Chanigan wants like has that strategy in the back of his head. But okay, Gouda, what you got? Yeah, vanilla pro cape. Fiend of Obsession, one of the other members in this pod, actually, um, pointing out they don't have the defense either. So yeah, the defense would be a really nice pickup as well, actually. Defense, always good. Hey, free gold! Yep. Ooh, nice ambush. Oh, something that should be mentioned, you know, we've been seeing a lot of black belt comps, but same thing with thieves. Getting early levels makes your dungeon dives not only safer for HP, but you also get more ambushes, you get more um, the enemies running away, so there's lots of different benefits for that. Oh, we got Adam, and we got Schrodinger's uh, fetch quest. Mm -hmm. Bad news for Gouda here, though, at least, is that he doesn't have exit, so he is going to have to walk out, but if he picks up a ribbon on the way out, if he decides to open some boxes, that would be pretty nice. Chanigan, if he ends up going to ice, is just going to probably exit from that box, though. Yeah, it looks like Gouda's going to pass up the six-pack. I think I would have at least cracked the six-pack there looking for a ribbon. Yeah. Um, okay, so Chanigan is doing the nice uh, heads-up play here of feeding the mages to the sharks. It is officially Shark Week here on FFR, uh, Spring Tournament 2021. Uh, but th this th this will let them die pretty quickly. If if he was relying on the eyes to take out the mages, though, that would take forever. So it's good that Chanigan had the heads up to do that as a newer member of the community. Yeah, even on a, on a stripped down character, an eye is only going to hit for like 50 damage tops. Mm -hmm. Shark only hitting for 34, but it can do much more than that if it gets a little bit of a better swing in. Oh, that's big. Ooh. If you're a Gouda fan, that is exactly what you needed to see. Because at this, at that rate, it's very likely that now Chanigan is going to go do a bunch of dub locations, like Ordeals. Meanwhile, Gouda... Uh, he could still decide to do Ordeals before Waterfall, but more likely to be able to hit go mode. I feel with levels on you like this that there's a very strong chance you hit the Onrak Continent before you go to Ordeals. Especially without Warp. Right. So, uh, yeah. So as, as I said, like, the reason I'm always just comparing and contrasting is, like, what is very, very important, what incentive locations between two relatively evenly matched execution runners, it's really important what incentive locations these runners end up clearing. Yeah. When you get to, when you get up to a certain level and you're going to be on about the same level as Jeff just pointed out with your your co-runners here, it's all about your execution and your routing. So it's all about how well you are menuing, how well you are routing through these locations and where you decide to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Chanigan does have both his... Oh, doesn't even decide to kill the Gersharks. But um, is going to go heal up that two-man now. Yep, once again, we're taking the two-man. We're going to go out and save the two-man. Yep. This just kind of goes back to that point I was making earlier about, like, you know, you spent a lot of time danning off those characters. Let's make sure you don't have to do that again. Oh. Chanigan's going down to a solo... Th Ooh, this is aggressive. 
I don't hate it, but I'm really curious to see how high Chanigan wants to go with this Solo Thief. Solo Thief... Uh, mid-30s, maybe? I mean, you're because you're not going to have the just straight physical power of a black belt, but a one crit on a... or a couple crits on a Katana 2 will just absolutely shred everything. I mean, the thing with the Solo Thief is that unlike a, like a high-level knight, it doesn't have life. And the ninja's going to be very, very problematic um, without the mages. So... I guess, but here's the thing, that Vitality buff, man, is just so massive. These red mages already have a ton of HP, and one of them should survive most nukes. So, right. you know, th this does make sense, actually. Good decide, we're going to see about our first fiend kill. We're nuking, we're nuking, we're swinging. Unfortunately, our swinger is uh, blinded, but nuke gets it rid of it. That's our first orbit, about 33-15. So far, definitely an interesting race. These early floater one floater races always um, have lots of you know interesting decisions that the runners have to make. So yeah, these most of these a lot of these races not I wouldn't say most because every race is different. But a lot of these races have come down to is the floater on the inner sea and this becomes a routing exercise, or is it on the northern continents and this becomes an execution exercise. Or uh, do you go to sea or sky first exercise sometimes? <laughs> coin flips or coin flips, exactly. Hey, sometimes you make all the right plays and you get blown out by a floater on Mirage 1. That is true. Chanigan playing a little risky with his HP here, but uh, should be healing up here. Yeah. Yeah, we got heal pots galore. We're just going to top it off now here. Um, yeah, Ooh. being under 200, not good. Interesting decision here to do Sea Shrine first. Is Guda going to clear just left side and then go do Waterfall? Is he going to full clear? There's a lot of decisions here. Um, sometimes just clearing left side and hoping that you can skip Waterfall entirely definitely checks out. But remember that key led to, or Waterfall led to the key and the rod, so all of Gouda's go mode is in Waterfall right now. Yeah, so he's definitely gonna get it, it's just a matter of if, do we decide on the full C clear here? Yeah. Uh, best case scenario is Gouda comes across probably a power bonk in one of like the, the peanut room or the free chests and uh, yeah. Sharknado. Yeah, 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 the, the power bonk is the premium item here, although the white shirt would be appreciated as well, but I think the power bonk is probably more important. And just cast so far. Channing is still taking eyes. We're down to Sharknado floor. Uh, we'll have to see how good a route is. I think you, you since you're on left side, you have to route the full thing. Yeah. yeah sure enough. You, you can't choose to do Sea Shrine first and then not do, like, go left side and leave chests. It seems, that seems insane, so... But deciding to skip mermaids and doing waterfall first is very logical. Um, and that could save Gouda some time. We got ambushed by everybody's favorite seafood. Lobster? Pretty good. Sea snake? I haven't tried it. Probably sounds not as tasty, though. How, how high Probably is a little Chanigan? salty. Chanigan's 31. That is pretty high for how well geared it is, but he He's still going. Th this is going to make it a lot safer. And honestly, when I consider wh whether I would rather have uh, a you know a 25 red mage with 450 HP and a 27 thief, or whether I rather have like a 35 thief and a 22 red mage with 390 HP, the 35 thief sounds pretty good. Maybe he's going all the way up. It'd be like it'd be like a meme, you know. Mom, can we have 42 black belt? We have 42 black belt at home. 42 black belt, <laughs> actually a 42 ninja. I'm uh, just quickly looking up the weapon breakpoints. I have to do some quick math. I'm trying to figure out when that uh, I'm trying to figure out when that thief gets an extra swing on the katana at plus two. So it looks like it's 37, which is pretty high. Yeah, that's a little high, but I mean, better. To... I mean, you're already on 34. What's a couple more levels? Yeah, because 31's that breakpoint, and that hit gets hit at 29 with the katana plus two, and that's where I'd be like, ooh, that, that's looking good. So the katana, or the ninja at 29 is like a really, really nice breakpoint for it. But 37 is just going to be like doing its best black belt impression. Yeah, pretty much. 
So, Gouda cleared out all of Sharknado, and I don't think we found Junk. Yep. Which is unfortunate for him. Uh, some hungry guy asking, what's special about level 42? So, level 42 is only special on the black belt, but yeah, we have people in chat helping out. It's when the black belt gets an extra hit break point. So, for melee classes who swing weapons, their hit break points are dependent on both their own levels as well as the weapon's hit percentage. For the black belt, it's just dependent on levels when they're unarmed. So, that's why for this, I have to keep take into account the weapon, plus the weapon's blur thing, plus the ninja's base hit growth, which is how I came up with 37. Uh, but for the black belt, it's always 21, 32, 42 in terms of levels. Now here's something I don't actually know. Uh, would a blur on the hit percentage actually affect that as well? Yes. Um, but the one exception is the Masa because its hit percent is already maxed out. But for the Katana, I don't believe it is. It isn't. So the plus two does still apply. And it's roughly one hit per level of Blursing. Or one level per level of Blursing, if that makes sense. Alright, so Chanigan's done. Chanigan is diving down. Uh, I think this is a solo ninja about to go have a very sh a very short talk with Lich. Yeah, I mean, this solo ninja is going to be quite powerful and we'll be able to run from most things and get a lot of um, of good stuff, so yeah, th this this will work. That's if you don't morale break the entire enemy formation for one experience and one gold. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Demon Frog saying, you know what, you know what's better than doing math on stream or when you're racing is just hitting the eye until you see six. And that's basically what Chanigan was doing. So, yeah. yeah, once you see that sixth hit come up, you're like, okay, I can go now. Meanwhile, blinking, you missed on Gouda's side. Uh, we've th we threw the Kraken in the microwave. The Kraken is dead. We now have our second orb lit. I will note that. Um, oh no. Yeah, We're doing mermaids. Yeah, it's not great for uh, Gouda. Now, I will note that yes, Gouda has two orbs lit, but Volcano barely counts as a dungeon. It takes about a minute to. It takes like a minute and a half in go mode, depending on the encounter table. So. Hey, best case scenario, we reset out of a ruby that was on the right. This is why you always loot the light, the right side chest before you go down Kraken. I never checked that chest on the way down, but that would have saved Gouda some time. But luckily enough for Gouda, he's going to be able to skip ordeals and. The big thing here for Chanigan is that Chanigan's almost certainly going to be doing our deals before Marsha Ice Cave, and that's just going to give another advantage to Gouda. Yeah, that'll give back a lot of the time that Gouda lost doing the rest of the NRC, is the fact that Chanigan's probably going to last location out that uh, Oxyel. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But, you know, Gouda did full clear left side C as well, so little bit of uh, trade-offs either way. Gouda though, in good, both honestly, both runners in pretty good shape. Oh yeah, we've got we've got good weapons. We've got stacked parties. The armor's pretty good. The lack of ribbons is a hair concerning, but it depends on how tough it rolls. Yeah, if you thought a thief ran well, how about a ninja with plus fifteen luck at level thirty-seven? Yeah, I don't know of much that you're going to fail to run from. This is a little risky, though. I, I might have healed here. To, th this is one, like, nasty encounter away from dying, but... Yeah, we got away. Uh, we are at least... We are going to respect Lich 1 because we only have one party member. Fair enough. This is really nice proximity running, though, by Chanigan. The fact that this worked. I don't know if I would have tried going down with the solo thief. I might have rezzed my party and then came back, but... Um, that's, you know, that's a nice 30 second time save, so really, really well done. And Gouda getting his key. I feel like it's, so there's, there's an argument that maybe proximity route ordeals while you're here, but I feel like you have to turn the key in right away when you're one item from go mode. Yeah, uh, I, you, uh, 100% run down the fetch quest here. Yeah. All right, we're rising the party on Chanigan's side. We've got our first fiend down. We've got a super ninja. Let's see where we're gonna what we're gonna do from here. Yeah, so I think high absorb, high evade fiends uh, favor Chanigan, whereas high non-elemental fiends probably favor Gouda. Although both parties will struggle. Ooh, really interesting play here by Chanigan. I was not expecting this. Um, 
if he clears Martian Ice before he does or deals, that's really going to be really good for Chanigan. But this is a little bit surprising, because remember, there's a 50% chance this is just the ship. And we know, because of commentators, that this is just the ship. Right. Yeah, Asher's saying he won't lose much time in Marsh, but I'm more referring to the fact that this does make Ice more appealing, and he might decide to go to Ice before ordeals, which would be huge. Yeah, this, this is going to... Because now at this point, you're like, okay, well, this is down here. Now the only... You know, Ice definitely has something, whether it's a dud or exactly. not, being a ruby, something like that. Yeah, exactly. But you're going to clear Ice before you clear Sea Shrine or Sky, right? Probably. I probably go Ice if I if, if I have the levels for Warp, but we don't have Warp. Sorry, we had we just had a quick question in chat. Um, trying to use just one character? No, but they are using the same party makeup because this was four forced. So they did have like, the seed to determine what uh, party they would run. Uh, another question, chat. Is this a randomizer? Yes, this is absolutely a randomizer. Okay, so Chanigan. Unfortunately for him, this is just like a three-minute time loss. Although a white shirt or a power bonk, both nice to have. At least Ordeals is not the ruby uh, for Chanigan's sake. The ruby yeah. is completely useless unless there's a ribbon in Titanus Drove and for some reason you decide to go check it. Go ahead and over here to check out our gold deals. bracelets is what he's looking for. Yeah, gold. He probably skipped gold bracelets because they are in crescent. Hmm. I would have checked. I would check magic there just in case. Man, Guda is flying here. This is like easily on pace for. Uh, well, not easily on pace, but definitely on pace for a sub hour. It could be. Uh, I. I was gonna ask, and I don't, and I'm not upset at the play of at least checking uh, Mirage One for a ribbon, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Also, at this point, he knows that the ribbon or, or the power bonk or white shirt is in here, so that's also a pretty nice pickup. Well, <laughs> something that leads to the power bonk or ribbons in here. I think we're still oh, yeah. two, three fetch quests out, <laughs> and the slab and the bottle both suck. Yeah, well, the bottle's the yeah, the bottle's terrible. The slab's extra terrible, and the crystals in there is in this mess somewhere. Yeah, I, I would probably do the crystal if I picked it up just in Mirage for free. With the ninja in particular, right? You really do want. Um... Oh man, this this is the worst case ordeals for Chanigan. He's got a yeah. fourth four pillar non mandatory ordeals. It feels terrible. Yeah. Um... All right, we're up. We're into Sky proper. We are checking maybe the four greed chests on Sky 3, but other than that, we are on our way. Wait, I think Chanigan's lost. So what's happening here, I think, is that one of these four pillars goes to a random location. I think it threw him off. And then he's actually going the wrong... He either skipped one of the four pillars or he's going actually going one of the wrong directions. Oh, he had another split? Hmm, I feel like he's been... Oh, I see, it's just another split after the four pillars. Okay. It's just the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's awful. Uh, Good is actually looting out Sky 2. I'm a little shocked. I think he's doing this for EXP. So Sky 2 is actually one of the best uh, floors in all of Sky, if not the best floor for enemy encounters. So if you're not looking for gear, but you're looking for levels, Sky 2 is where it's at. Well, you can also get some chests. Yeah, it's got Gurmadusa... It's got eyes, it's got uh, mana cores. So yeah, this is looking like close to like a three, four minute time loss for Chanigan. Um, especially if this is like crystal to slab to bottle or something like that. Well, you've started it because there's a crystal. No ribbons either. Ribbons just non-existent. Yeah, who knows where they're all at. They're buried in Volcano, probably. Yeah. If they're on Sky 2, though, that could be a big edge for Gouda. The ribbons on, you know, unlikely Chanigan going to be clearing Sky 2. Like, Chanigan's just done with levels, right? You have a 37 ninja, you, you can't afford to take any more fights, because he sat on that grind tile for a while longer. Yeah, I, I feel like you have to just be go, 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 and Chanigan's going to head straight into Sky here. 
Wow, this is... This is gonna be a full clear of sky. Oh! One ribbon. That's big. Yeah, I think Gouda stops opening chests right now. I agree. Man, I don't know how Chanigan makes up this deficit. Just, like, the routing decisions, um, where the items ended up being... Now, that's... Sorry, let me rephrase that for anyone who's watching who's maybe hasn't watched a ton of FFR. That is not to say Chanigan has lost this race. This is not, you know, uh, a very solved game where once you're on the final level, the best runners are, uh, you know, 95% chance to get through. It's just unlikely at this point that Chanigan will be able to get into Topher um, prior to Gouda at this point, I would say. So, the slabs on the four freebies in Sky 3. If Chanigan takes what's become popular routing, especially having all the levels on you already, and does Sky 3 before Sky 2, they can make up about a minute. <laughs> and miss the ribbon. <laughs> well, you gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's absolutely fair. Because let's be honest, the five o'clock the five o'clock arm of Sky Two is like the last one that every person is going to check, except for maybe the vanilla and stuff. Yeah, that that's what I call. Yeah, that is the last chest. There was a floater there in one of my pickup races, and yep, dead last chest in Sky that I opened. Alright, good kids still getting some good experience here by doing Sky first and just getting up the rest of these light warriors up to the where the other uh the ninja and the original red wizard are. Okay, so Gouda on the bridge of destiny. If you want to see Oh actually never mind, we have a force war mech. You will be yeah. seeing our robot overlord shortly here. Yeah, if you like if you like two legged uh mechanical poultry, get ready. First check, Bane Sword Chest. What insanity. Yeah, at this point you're just, oh my god, I, I, you've already convinced yourself all oh, the Oxyels in Sky, this is terrible, I'm and just full clearing it on autopilot at this point. Chanigan taking a lot of fights, and actually so is Gouda, considering there's a required war mech, like, I don't know what levels they're looking for, but they're looking for a lot of levels. <laughs> no. Everybody's prepping for, like, the triple nuke chaos. Yeah. I think a lot of it's just going to be that the uncomfortableness of having your melee carry be a ninja, as opposed to everybody running black belt comps and fighter comps. Yeah, that's fair, especially for Gouda, with his, you know, ninja having relatively low HP. But Chanigan has a 37 ninja. This is, like, a much, much, much better 24 fighter. You know what I mean? Exactly. Oh! Oh no. Uh, Warmech leads off with Zap. We have two two fighters on the floor. Good news, actually, for Gouda. That could be awful for Chanigan if he doesn't open a ribbon. Oh! Zap Tornado, excuse me. Now it's getting sketchy. Now, Gouda managed to live through it, and... Oh, oh my no. good oh. lord! This nuke could do it. No. That's a terrible roll. Oh my god, this war mech's a nightmare! So, for those of you at home, that was Zap Tornado Nuclear Nuke. So, that means it's Zap Nuke Tornado Nuclear. So depending on the exact order of spells that Chanigan gets, he could get a super different war mech, right? Because the fact that Nuclear and Nuke are second spells makes a huge difference. But, remember, man, I, I just cursed that so bad. Remember how I said I don't see how Chanigan gets into Topher first? Well, welcome, welcome to that. <laughs> That's how Chanigan uh, gets into Topher first. <laughs> Gouda immediately saying, okay, we're going all the levels right now. So the thing about it is Nuke and Nuclear are two different things. Nuclear being a skill as opposed to Nuke being a spell. So they're on two different lists. You have to get through Tornado to get to Nuclear. You have to go through Zap to get to Nuke. Yeah. So best case scenario for Chanigan is you go something like Zap Nuke and then Tornado Nuclear where you have chances to heal. Exactly. Or you just see punch, 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 punch. Right? I didn't see Warmark punch. <laughs> well, there's always a chance. Um, also, but keep in mind, this is where that extra hit really pays off, right? Chanigan could be going with, like, temper, temper, swing, because he trusts his ninja way more, right? And that ninja could, like, two-shot this Warmark. 
yeah, uh, I mean, six crits, uh, six crits 1200 do a lot of work on a 1500 hit point max of boss. This ninja has seven hits. <laughs> it's like a 32 black belt with more crit. A lot more crit. So Ch Chanigan's clearing out Sky 2, which is going to be extremely good news when the word Zap appears on your screen. Is he going to clear the right side of Sky 2? He's not. Aww. Goodbye, Ribbon. Yep, because we're going to clear all of Sky 3 with the intention of if we don't get it, we're going to go back down and do... Yep. Now, we didn't check these chests, so these 10 chests up here could have a second Ribbon in it. That would be huge. This ninja punching incredibly hard, though. I don't know what Gouda's... Gouda's having a little, uh... Little crisis. Um... That, that war mech, I mean, that would be one of the worst places to wipe is on the Bridge of Destiny, right? Because he spent so much time in Sky, got a bunch of levels, opened a lot of boxes, but he just lost his ribbon, he lost his levels. Yes, he can pick up the ribbon on the way up, but like, that is crushing. Yeah, I believe this is, this is the other Fiend dungeon. I need a breather and something to clear my head because my world axis is probably just a little off center right now. Yes, absolutely. Um, Reese asking, where is the Oxhale? The Oxhale is an ice cave, which Chanigan has not yet gone to. It's in the um, left side, the left two pack, which means he can just exit out. So it's a relatively quick check when he decides to go there. But if he like decides to go do Sea Shrine first, that's not good for Chanigan. I mean, he's probably going to decide to do this lab before anything. Yeah. <laughs> How's it? I don't even think he's turning the crystal I just, yet. I was just about to say, I think the crystal first, probably. Gouda's opening a lot of boxes. I, what's he looking for? A second ribbon? More ribbons. <laughs> That's... Oh, man. Uh, I I was saying a sub-hour is possible on this scene, but uh, not any longer. Okay, Gouda. All right. Oh, sorry, Chanigan. Here we go. Let's see how terrible this goes, or if it goes great. We're going to swing. Okay, this is best case. If we go tempers... Nuke, nuke, nuke. Nuke Nuke Fade is actually a really good play here, too. And in this too, not great. We'll see how it goes. I saw Nuke and I thought Warmech opened it. I'm like, what? That's impossible. That was not a big swing, but there's a punch. Best case scenario. This Warmech will die next turn. It should die on turn three. Not, not with these low rolls of nukes, but this... Okay, Tornado. Okay, Nuke will kill his life casters. Can we get through with the fade? Can we get through the swing? Can we get through the nuke? There it oh, is! Oh, thank goodness. Almost a perfect outcome, actually, for Chanigan there. Wow. Yeah, that was... Cho Chanigan gets through that without knowing, Hey, well, that Warmech wasn't so bad, it was a tornado. Not knowing what lurked just beneath the surface. Yeah, punch, tornado, yeah, and then turn order on turn three. That's all really, really good. Because um, that zap would have been, like, terrible for his party. And a first turn Brack, wow. Chanigan just getting the luck right now. So Chanigan needed to get some time back uh, and just got it in spades. Yeah. Now, I always say people getting lucky, things like that. It doesn't mean that the runners don't deserve it, quote-unquote. It just means that they got much better luck or much worse luck compared to their opponents, right? FFR, Rando's gonna Rando. Rando's gonna Rando. Usually Topher's gonna Topher, but in this case, Warmack's gonna Warmack. Oh, yeah. It's, so this is where Chanigan's giving his luck back, because he's gonna be doing a slab turn-in and a bottle turn-in for... Uh, white shirt and power bonk. Not the worst. But... I guess the bright side is you can't clear a sea shrine because the item you're looking for gets you into sea shrine. True. And yeah, taking a look at our armor, uh, considering the silver three, in place of the ice minus three you picked up in sky. I think what he's actually looking for is gold bracelets, but or like bracelets, but I I know Chanigan's seen the gold bracelets and and crescent. I mean, and you're going to be getting a white shirt, which hopefully rolled up, and it's going to be better than your gold. Yeah, now, I, I think a quick note here. Volcano and Ice Cave combined are probably still faster than that sky clear. 
with the Warbeck fight, right? Easily. So, the orbs are 2-2, but, like, Volcano's such a fast dungeon. <laughs> yeah, and Go Mode C is not bad, it's just a matter of getting away from the encounters, which 37 ninjas do very well. Yes, absolutely. And Gudo opening all these boxes in Earth, too. Not that I can blame him, once again, I, you know, he just got everything spooked out of him by, by Warmack, but... Yeah, we're, I mean, you know when you're checking the south chest, the, the behind the bed of Vampire on Earth 4, that something has gone amiss. Correct. Chanigan doesn't seem, oh, is, he, is this where the, doesn't seem to remember where the gold bracelets are. This is costing him some time. Yeah, a little bit. So our gold bracelets are in Crescent, and our pro rings are in Provoca? Um, I believe so. Okay, this proximity route to Volcano, really good. If he decides to proximity route Ice here, that would be really good, because that would save him a trip to... Um... Lafayne, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Chanigan does still not have a ribbon, though, so is going to be clearing more chests here. So it's our first look at Armory, I believe. And Gouda's going to be going to go hit that um, high station for a while again. Yeah, at this point, we're just taking anything we can get to make sure we survive. And we don't want that to happen a second time because that would be just the worst. Mm -hmm. Finding nothing. Finding a, was that really bad. Was that a nice sword or a nice armor? Whatever it was, was terrible. I think it was a nice sword minus four. Uh, yeah, nice sword. Oh, Chanigan opening even wow. more boxes, though. We're going to the we're going to the switch back now. There's no way he does um, hairpins, right? I I assume not. I'm wrong. No, we're no, no. Gonna he's going to do down. what? We're doing hairpins. Holy! No. No. Okay. I thought okay, we were, we're going to We're not doing the long one, thankfully. I thought we were going to see the first hairpins of Spring Tournament 2021. <laughs> not quite. But this does lead me to believe that Chanikin's probably going to full clear... It's probably going to full clear Agama Floor and only skip the... what would be the vanilla and volcano incentive, which has no uh, incentive in the dungeon. Yeah. Oh boy. So big decision coming up here for Chanigan. Does he go ice before he does bottle slab? It seems illogical, but he has been proximity routing quite a bit this seed, so... If you, even if you do go ice, you still turn on the bottle, right? Because you know it's the bonk or the white shirt. Depends on if you feel ahead or not, or behind. But, yeah. How high is Gouda going? Also, Gouda's two manning here. I guess we're considering we take two all the we take two all the way up and maybe strap a ribbon on the third, or just so that we make sure we have somebody who's going to survive um, the nu nuclear because we can strap. Yeah, I mean, I guess you take the red mage up here just to make sure you can survive a nu nuclear. So you're going to be going to 600 ish, 650. Yeah, but that seems crazy. I feel like. Alternatively, you could just go, like, swing, nuke, nuke, fade, and then just hope a little bit, you know? Because yeah. here's the thing with Sky. Yes, it's a little bit of a long dungeon, but if you open zero boxes, it's not that long. Versus spending a lot of time here. I guess it also is improving toe for safety, though, so there's a trade-off, but this has got to feel bad. What toe for safety? We know where four of the nastiest spells are. Ooh. Okay, he's found it. Chanigan has found a ribbon. That was one major advantage that Gouda had. Uh, but Chan Chanigan finding it in a chest that Gouda very logically skipped in Volcano. Yeah, that was what far nor or that was the far east chest. Center center right, as yes. I call it for my co-op partner. Yeah, center right. Uh, that yeah, no, that is very far off the beaten path. Even if you're checking chests on this floor, that is usually the one that you're going to be skipping. Uh, yeah. The red bees decided they're going to shuffle one tile earlier. I'm surprised that Chanigan's still opening boxes, but he is getting nothing. <laughs> I 
I mean, if you're already here, you've cleared everything else, you might as well just clear those two boxes. It's not like he's going to go over and check them in the middle of the center, right? True. Right? Right. <laughs> we did see a hairpin check. Um, Fiend to Pub Session saying Warmech and Fiends 2 have different spills skill list, right? Uh, they, yes, combined, they have a pool that they share. Uh, this fight should not take long. Bait, new, new. Swing. And this carry should be very dead very soon. So this volcano did take a little bit longer than expected because we did the full clear for the ribbon. But we got the ribbon. That's the important part. True. We gotta use that result. 4.45 on the swing. I mean, I'm, I know there wasn't a ton of crits, but still. I think one spell that we're really missing, and I'm just checking quickly our notes for our fantastic tracker, John, tonight. Um, I don't think we've seen Locke, which is also a little bit concerning, right? Because you saw the problem with that... Um, the problem with that war mech was that we didn't have fast and we didn't have Locke, and that was really, really bad. Um, yeah, so Chanigan saved at ice and then came up here. Um, I... Normally, I'd like it, but with what you know is left in the pool, if you even if you pull duds out of here, you're going to probably keep them. Hmm. I think it just depends on how whether you feel ahead or behind. Once again, but yeah, I mean, I agree with what you mean in general. And I did also just want to give a quick shout out to our restreamer for tonight, uh, Lord of the Synth, as you can see on the screen right now. Uh, big shout outs, thanks for help having us, and once again, thanks to. RPG Limit Break for hosting us here tonight. Uh, we appreciate everyone hanging out. And if you have any questions, kind of as we finish up our final endgame preparations, uh, please feel free to ask them in chat. If you want to do, if, you, if this looks interesting to you, you want to uh, join us, come join our Discord. It was just recently linked. And not only that, if you're a new player and you want to try it out, we have a Duckling Bootcamp, which is our new player program that is starting up in just a few uh, weeks here. So we really, really encourage you to come drop us a line in the new player duck pond. I hang out there all the time and there's so many players who are willing to give you a hand. So if this at all looks interesting, please feel free to check that out. I also guess, you know, we're just past the hour mark. So uh, my name's Jet. I'm joined here in the booth by Demon RHK. You are watching the Spring Tournament 2021 Final Fantasy Randomizer Tournament in the pods. Chanigan 2-0 against Gudo 1-0, tr both trying to fight for uh, bracket seeding and even to make it into the bracket in the first place. So uh, you're watching a very important matchup here and We've had a great one so far. A big highlight, uh, Chanigan last locationing the Oxale essentially in Ice Cave versus Gouda who wi wiped on Warmech, which was required, with a really, really nasty sp skill spell list that Chanigan just completely dodged. So Jenning and checking level 8 white magic a little unneeded here with what we have access to. We've already got, I think, every single white magic spell we could ever want, except for maybe Ruse. I think we've got Ruse. I think Ruse was... I want to say it was um, level 6. Yeah, level 6. Yeah. So we, we got Ruse Fade, Invis 2, Wall. We, we got nothing we need there. Unfortunately, we know that the, the lock is going to avoid us, as is the fast, probably between level 8 at Gaia and level 7 at Onrak. So, yeah, Falcona kind of saying in chat something that I was thinking about, that, like, Gouda really going for, like, the safety method of, like, really grinding this ninja up, but I was a little bit surprised that Gouda didn't just, like, say, I'm gonna go try and speed and power down the war mech with, like, Nuke Fade Fade, or Nuke Nuke Fade, for example. Yeah, that really has been, it's kind of, it's a trap a lot, especially when you're stuck with this, and, and I can quote this because this has happened in one of my races here in the spring tournament already. Mm -hmm. When you're running a ninja comp, you get worried and you try to over save yourself and go overly protective and you can't do that you got to race down whatever you're fighting yeah because the longer you go the more light warriors you lose the more light warriors you lose the stronger chance of you just wiping out completely yeah sometimes killing them dead before they kill you dead is the fastest and safest way <laughs> Chanigan went out of his way to get warp and then realized he had no charges. But he's going to get absolutely saved by the first chest he opens, basically being the Oxiel. Yeah, now, at this point, with as much as Chanigan's opened, even after opening that ribbon, I wonder if Chanigan's going to check the six pack before exiting. You gotta feel a little bit bad having last location this Oxiel, right? Yes, but. At some point, you've got. Does that creep into your head? 
and, and then not only that, it's not the adamant, but they know it has to turn on the oxtail. Uh, no, we're leaving. I think we're leaving right now. Okay. Because it's got to creep into your head, you know, well, at this point, if my opponent hasn't finished, how bad is everything? Okay, and Gouda is done. But Chanigan about to hit his go mode here. He knows this is the Oxhale. All right, so Chanigan gets the Oxhale, is in go mode, only has a C Shrine to go. Gouda is done with her grind, is going to save up, only has Sky to go. However, Gouda is probably going to make a stop off on Sky 2 to pick up the ribbon that they know is there. Yes. So this is definitely Chanigan, I would put at the advantage here, because Gouda still has to go through that Wormack. <laughs> Crab Cake's pointing out something. So there's a katana in um, the Elf Castle armory that Chanigan picked up early because he had an early key that Gouda has not, so... But I will say that, for the most part, the katana and the Vorpal are going to behave similar enough. Uh, Chanigan's stopping for Cure 4 at level 7. Um, That's well, I... pick up. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the levels on your White Mage, and I think he's got enough levels on the White Mage at this point, for, or White Wizard at this point, for maybe one or two casts, which could be huge. Yeah. That's what I call the Hail Mary slot, because it has... Uh, it's the last slot that the Red Mage can learn life in sometimes. But I don't think the white, the Red Mages have levels for it. Uh, 456, probably not. They're probably mid-20s. I think they need to be for for their top spell slots, like, what, like 28? Uh, for, for level 7? I, I, think, I think it's closer to, like, 26, but yeah. Someone in chat might have the level 7 spell slot. It very rarely comes up. Yeah, but, but I'm trying to do math on Twitch. I, I'm failing anyway. <laughs> so, Gouda is... Gouda's clearing Sky 1? Uh, he wanted that flame armor again, which is, oh. you know, 10 absorb difference from the ice armor, so fair enough. Yeah. But then he's losing 4 absorb changing shields, so plus 6. <laughs> yeah. So, it is what it is. Um, still taking fights, it looks like, or just 3 runs and a... 3 runs and a nuke? Three runs in a nuke. Yep, the old classic. Okay. All right, but Chanigan's already on Kraken floor while Gouda's about to pick up the ribbon with two and a half floors to go. So Chanigan on pace to enter the Temple of Fiends Revisited just slightly earlier, but Chanigan has a couple advantages. Um, no longer has the level advantage on his ninja, but does have the power gauntlet and white shirt, right? Has the power gauntlet, has the white shirt. It's swinging a katana plus two instead of a vorpal plus two. Uh, definitely sitting in a comfortable in a comfortable position here. Uh, yeah. You probably, however, at Chanigan's position here, where everything was, and the fact you last location the Oxhale, you probably feel terribly behind. Yes, I agree. I think Gouda also feels terribly behind. That's the funny thing, right? You, you don't wipe on Warmech and Sky and feel ahead, and then grind for ten minutes. All right. And here's Kraken. Brack strats and power punk strats. Ooh, crack with leadoff blizzard. I don't know if we saw that last time. Two bracks ineffective. I think it's what twenty. That's like twenty-five percent. So one in four uh, failing twice here. Yep, twenty-six point nine. Ooh, down goes the white mage. Kraken not punching that hard, though. That was only, like, just barely over its HP. But, you know, Kraken's punches will take down these red mages. But this ninja's gonna swing real hard unless this Kraken has a lot of uh, evasion in particular. Alright, Brack 5. Hey, there we go. Eh, pretty much on the odds. So, Chanigan casted six Bracks and hit twice. A little bit over, but, you know, well within the, uh, like, a standard deviation. Alright, we're through. That's four orbs lit at uh, 111, we'll call it 111.11, just for a bunch of ones. And Chanigan's just got to res up and get ready, f maybe buy up some heal pots. Mm -hmm. Gouda coming back to his arch nemesis. Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm going to be very curious to ask Gouda if his favorite enemy is still Warmack after this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gouda's favorite enemy is Unleashed Warmack, not Required Warmack. So I think Gouda's point still stands. Speaking of Gouda, Gouda the ninja is now level 41. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that Chanigan's ninja is still higher level than that, although after Warmech, I'm sure Gouda's will be higher. Yeah. And we can't say no, apparently, to the Metal Slimes. They're just so much experience. Uh, 
Falconic going through some what ifs, but I mean, what ifs apply in Final Fantasy Randomizer, of course, but there's also a lot of what ifs all over the place. You know, what if we checked this chest? What if we saw this spell? What if we did this trap tile? What if, you know, this weapon crit instead of missed, etc., etc. So. Yeah, you, you can you can brainstorm it all you want, but it just comes down to how the how the gods of RNG decide they're going to affect you on that day, and then how your decisions try and mitigate that as best you can. Yeah. Trying to get taking some time on his his prep, he's just giving Gouda an opportunity to um, get into Topher. But I think that's it. Two big events happening right now. Chanigan into the Temple of Fiends Revisited at the one hour, 13 minute mark. Meanwhile, Gouda, take two, Warmack. You want to take this one, uh, Demon? All right. So we have two bad skills with two worse skills behind them. So we're going to see how this goes. We're going to switch our party around. Here we go. Here's the chicken. It looks like we're going to get some get some buffing going. Uh, I think I saw some of this two going out. Here's a swing. Nuke comes out. Uh, 130 was resisted. Wall comes out. Uh, not gonna be the greatest. It will stop against the 240 from that nuke. It will stop against the zap once it comes out, though. Warmack just replies with a swing. That's best case scenario. Here comes the zap. We lose the white. We lose the ninja. Oh no. Now we're in bad shape. We just need a nuke. Nuke, nuke, nuke. This, this 310. Is, this is in bad shape. Th these nukes will do it, but. <laughs> that was a zap through a wall. Wow. 3 and 256. N level's not the worst thing to be going on to those uh, red mages. See, that's where the speed and power strat really comes through, right? You would think that the ninja is the most important thing there, but Warmech only has 1,000 HP. Nuke's gonna do the trick, right? Yeah, not to mention, I think two or th two of those were unresisted for like 325 plus. Yeah. <laughs> Retro Gaming just got here in time for the second Warmech, or the third Warmech, uh, if you count both runners. But the first Warmech, definitely one of the tales of this seed so far. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Gouda, after vanquishing the real boss of the floating castle, uh, has his four orbs lit and is about to enter the Temple of Fiends Revisited like a minute and a half or two minutes, I guess, by the time all's said and done after Chanigan. Yeah, it depends on how long we stop to do prep here. Um, but Chanigan's already down. We are approaching Earth Floor, heading for Lich 2. I think Reese the Ribbon was on the red mage with all the hp that was like level 36 or whatever but if it was on the white white wizard that would have been two three and 256 and then the other two characters without a ribbon missing which is hilarious yeah that was <laughs> zap through wall ffr is gonna do ffr things oh this badman uh fight this the, i was just talking to greg Puff, uh one of our other duck derby dons uh, and he's like, if I see nine bad men, I'm just resetting on the first floor. Yeah, bad men, it's one of those fights where they're not bad. Like, they're bad, but they're not bad. Is that a vanilla phantom tile? We do have a vanilla phantom tile. Huh. But it's just the fact that they usually roll something, they melee really hard, and if they ambush, there's nine of them. Uh, so yeah, we have the vanilla phantom, and Lich goes down. Chanigan about... Ooh, Worms with Thunder. Chanigan also did not see that. Wow, terrible turn order. Now, luckily, once again, that Red Mage has tons of HP, and Life 2 is going to make uh, healing this up real quick. Um, but a little bit of a time loss there. Yeah, well... Got Agamas with Gaze. I saw some Dark on a bunch of our characters there. I don't know if that was a Dark or actually Dark, dark Touch. And here comes Kerry. Meanwhile, Gouda on the Earth floor. All right, Nuke comes out. 151. Carries high uh, M Def coming into play here. 183. The melee swing. 391. Fade for 94 and terminated. That was almost mid roll HP. That was like just 700 and change damage. Once again, 100 to 150 percent HP here. So uh, cracking coming up between 900 and 1350 HP. Yeah. Now this is where Topher is really going to kick in high gear. Is with all yeah. these swings on our Kraken too. I think you go power bonk turn one on your ninja with like nuke nuke fade, but we'll have to see what Chanigan decides to do. I think Invis is a trap here. Absolutely. Uh, in this scenario, I one turn of one turn of buffing and then full power. So either you know. Bob, bonk temper temper, 
or nuke nuke bonk and then just straight out fade to nukes. But nope, going um going defensive. Invis on the top character, temper temper. This this does this could work. Also, that red mage has so much HP that, that with that ruse, it could survive a track and punch here. And it does easily, so that's huge. Stun touch. Yeah, that's bad. That's real bad for the ninja. Yeah, don't get don't punch slot three. That's what we're going for. No slot three punching. Anywhere else. Lit two, that's basically a free round. We take that. Yeah, that's 30 damage across the board. We'll take that all day, especially with our ridiculous HP growth on our red wizards. Guda one floor behind. Yes, and this is the thing. When you go for too much buffing, you know, you're still here, and now Guda's already up to carry two, and we're just going to power through. Okay, that's a big ninja swing, though. So next turn, we should be going nukes, swing, fades, because at this point, Kraken... Oh, not he just relying on his ninja. That works as well. It's kind of scary if Kraken, like, you know, does something bad to your ninja, like, punches it to death, but... And we are on the same floor. We are an hour and 18 minutes into the seed, and our runners are one fiend apart. Yeah, this is a very, this is a little bit of a higher roll. Well, we think it might be a higher roll. That last hit being for 1,300 kind of makes it hard to tell. All right, we're switching our party around. Here we go, Tia 2. Decisions. It looks like about the same strats. We could bruising on our Ruse and Invis. I think we're going full defensive here. Yeah, it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, Rub missing here. Without fast, this ninja's not just gonna like blow up a fiend like a black belt would, right? So going a little bit more defensive does make sense. But you know, what he doesn't realize is this might make sense in terms of being safe. But his opponent is right on his tail. Yeah, this is allowing every every defensive spell cast is damage that's not going out, every damage that's not going out allows Guda to make up just that one second. Yeah, okay, there we go, though. Nuke, nuke, swing. Okay, heal three. I like the heal three, actually. Yeah, be safe. The white mages are going to do it much anyway. So oh, that's three. a swing. Yeah, the heal three didn't look like it did anything there, but if, if uh, Tia came out with, like, a nuclear, the heal three could then come out afterwards, so that's why the heal three is not, like, that bad of a play there. And once again, we are exactly one fiend apart. Guda not even, like, pausing, just going straight onto Tia. Yep, just going right in. We're gonna, we we know we're behind, or we know it's it's up against the wall. Speaking of the wall, the wall comes out. Alright, Chanigan's talking to Chaos. Moving the ribbon, yep. And then rearranging the party. Okay, Guda is playing a little bit a defensively on a Tiamat, which I think is reasonable, but I do like the nukes. A uh, little bit lower rolls, though, and once again, his ninja, uh, willing the katana, or the X, or the Vorpal instead of the katana, will do slightly less damage, but uh, Chanigan onto Chaos. Wall does come out first, which is really nice, but interesting that he cast Wall on his Ribbon Ninja. That's not going to do anything. Uh, but casting Wall on another character would make sense if he wants to, like, keep a healer or a temper or caster up. Um, going to go Power Bonk again. This is going to be a big swing from the ninja. Ninja is going to be doing its best um, Black Belt impression, but the big concern for Chanigan here is if this Chaos is evasive. If he can hit it, he can hurt it. If he can't, though, it's problematic. Gouda through Tiamat. All right, good. We have to make sure we have life too. We had life too. Five hits is pretty good. Remember, that's five out of seven. That's not that evasive. That's really what Chanigan wants to see. Chaos between 2,000 and 3,000 HP. 645. You know, up to almost 1,400, 1,500 damage. One more punch could do it here. Guda on now, the Chaos floor. Chaos does have Sleep Touch. But we do have Heal 4, or Cure 4, rather, on uh, our Weight Mage. Oh, oh, that's it! Big crits! Chanigan! The relatively newer player takes out the commissioner himself, Gouda, with an official race time.gg time of 1 hour 21 minutes and 21 seconds. Uh, GG's to Chanigan. And uh, we are joined here in the booth. Of course, he had the 10 minute delay, so he was able to hop in right away. Uh, GG's, man. Congratulations. That must have been a heck of a race. That was so stressful. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. We'll get right back to you, because Gouda is on Chaos right now, and I want to make sure we are...
taking a look at this fight, but very similar strategies. Uh, he did cast the wall on someone who wasn't ribbon, which it was, you know, a little bit better, but otherwise, pretty much the same ideas. Lots of tempers, lots of swings. Vorpal, not quite as good as the katana, but still will be more than enough um, to get the job done. No, still a few more temper casts as well. Coming out with those tempers, this is going to be a big hit. Nope. <laughs> Vorpal doing Vorpal things. Yep, Vorpal got a Vorpal. <laughs> you know, sometimes it hits for a thousand damage, like your katana, sometimes it hits three hits, 111. Uh, but, you know, if Chaos doesn't do anything, Chaos doesn't do anything. Like this Chaos. Yeah, okay. Sleep Touch, Rub, that's about all we've really seen from it so far. Nothing, nothing, nothing right home about. <laughs> it's not Warback. No. Let's see, here we go. Katana redeems itself. 6 hits, 6 12. Chaos not long for this world. That's a lot of tempers. Oh, the rub gets through. It's a lot of tempers. Ninja's still not hitting nearly as hard as you would think, so think, but just not really getting super lucky on those crits. But one more swing will do it here. Yeah, Chaos a little on the absorby side. Mm hmm. Yeah, I definitely needed crits to break through. Whoa, he still lives! Wow! 644 and still up. I guess that last hit you needed every one of those thousand damage. There we go. There we go. Red Mage takes out Chaos and Gouda, finishing with an official race time.gg time of 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 32 seconds. GG's to Gouda. And we are joined in the booth by Gouda as well. Um, GG's to you, Gouda. Man, that war mech scared the crap out of me. I mean, to be fair, that war mech was scary. <laughs> my my only question is, did Chandigan see what I saw? Because nope. I saw nope. Insta, like, Zap, Nuke, Nuclear, Tornado, and I'm like, well, I need levels. Chanigan, so I'm like, I'm going to 40. Chanigan ground his ninja way higher than you did initially, so his ninja was doing a little bit more damage, but it also okay. just got much better... Uh, turn order and yeah. you got a punch turn one that was the critical difference you got skill spell skill spell and he got punch skill and then warmech was dead on turn three so yeah, that's, uh once once i got punches out of warmech it was great like yeah. the second time i'm like if i would have seen this the first time i would have never even done a grind yeah so i, I specifically highlighted G gouda you know demon was given giving you some sauce for uh the fact that your favorite enemy is warmech but you specifically said unleashed warmech yeah. Unleashed. What is your what is your opinion now on required Warmech? <laughs> I mean, I've I've always hated required Warmech. Let me let me have him whenever I want him, not uh, just you know right before Tia. Like required Warmech is you know good XP when you can take him out easy, but with this party, Warmech is not a guarantee. So did you um did you guys kind of like trade off like a selection each? Because I don't know if Chanigan wanted the four forced or if he did. Or no, no, no. He he actually. Uh, I'm like, hey, what do you want for this? And he's like, how about four force no masa, and required oh. warmek. And I'm like, sweet, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that, uh, that's go all in. <laughs> and I'm like, and uh, talking to some of the people in the community, they're like, you know, he, he likes black belt. And I'm like, well, if we if we get a black belt, I'm screwed. So it is what it is. He just treated his thief like a black belt. His 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 thief was above 42 by the end of it. So. Oh, nice. Uh, um, Chanigan, moving over to you, uh, do you kind of have any initial, like, thoughts that you want to give on that run overall? I know you said that your heart was pounding by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I feel like I've played way too passive, uh, in Temple of Fiend. Um, I haven't, I've killed him pretty much every Fiend in, like, two, three turns. Mm -hmm. uh, two, two, three, uh, attacks, mm -hmm. if I could say that, so, I haven't seen anything too scary, so I could I could have just punched my way in. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, that ribbon, I, I needed a, a, at least a ribbon, maybe two, and that's why I full cleared a, like Volcano, and I just opened so many boxes trying to find anywhere a ribbon, yeah, because I, I knew that that was my, my win uh, condition, so... Had I gotten through Warmack the first time, I would have been in Topher at, like, an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, maybe not quite that much. But yeah, you, you would have been in Topher a solid. Like, you lost eight-ish minutes or so on, 
on, on that oh, one. Yeah, I guess and if then you I, didn't get then scared. Then I did a time in a grind. That's I true, that's I went, true. I wouldn't have done another grind. I would have just, if I would have gotten through Warmack, I would have gotten through Warmack, did Tia, did Lich, gone straight into Topher and seen what, that's seen what would have happened. Mm, that's true, that's true. So, I mean, it, it would have been just go, go, go. And if I would have gotten popped out of Topher real quick, then I would have gone back to the eyes. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think just the way it happened, like, obviously that Warmack was a, a big turning point because it kind of scared you and made you grind. And then also, of course, it cost you all that time in Sky. I think another there was another kind of key decision that we were kind of talking about throughout though which was that so gouda you went to marsh before going to astos right which led you to get the ship out of there yep um but that made that mean meant that you had no problem going to ice early chanigan on the other hand um because he went to astos before marsh he didn't really want to do marsh or ice cave so i did just kind of want to ask a question to you chan again that you decided to do marsh relatively early but then you left ice to like way obviously the very last place that you checked so kind of like why did you think about going to marsh earlier but then you were like i don't refuse to do ice at this point i just don't like ice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my own heart yeah. yep uh, i just if i can never go to ice yep yeah, i'm mm. skipping it all day long Okay. Especially on these flags. These flags, ice feels bad a lot of times. So, I mean, I, yeah. I tend to skip ice a lot too, but I didn't have the levels or the spells to beat Astos. And as, as it was, once I got to level 5, I still barely had enough Fire 2s to take out Astos. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, that mage, uh, uh, mage stick in there. <laughs> <laughs> in Dwarf, uh, save my ass on that. <laughs> oh, I never even found the mage stick in Dwarf. That would have been great. Now I found nothing. I was like, uh, I think six ice, or I, th I think six fire two should do it. That that sounds about right. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Yeah, items seem to be just a just a big a whole seed of you know barely missing this, barely missing this. For example, uh, Chanigan went up sky already in go mode. You know, cleared the left side of sky two, and then went to sky three, and then all the way through to Warmack, where the ribbon was in the bottom right of sky two meanwhile yeah. but, but managed to make it up with the ribbon on the far far east side of the agama floor mm -hmm. whereas then chanigan went early and decided you know what i got a key i'm gonna go ahead and check locked on the um, elfland castle and comes away with a dragon plus five and a katana plus two uh, i was gonna check elfland too yeah I thought I, about it when I was there, and I'm like, uh, I think I've hit the reset button too many times by accident today, so uh, <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, the, the Katana Vorpal, like, obviously if one of them rolled down, it would have been a huge thing, but the fact that the Vorpal plus two, the Katana plus two, with they both need a bunch of tempers anyways, especially with the ninja, so, you know. Oh, not, it the, was... not the Katana. Katana's great. Well, Chanigan <laughs> was t tempering like crazy as well yep. to, in order to get uh, damage off, so... It, it, I don't think the swords were the were the big thing. I think war mech, route divergence, um, early grinding versus late grinding. That stuff was really. Uh, yeah, I went to really I went to twenty four on both the ninja and the red mage on the eyes, and I'm like twenty four should get me where I need to be, and I wanted to be around like twenty eight thirty by the time I ended, mm -hmm. and I think I did war mech at like twenty seven, and mm -hmm. it was or actually I think I was twenty eight, which is exactly where I want to be going into Topher with this party is 28 and Warmack just said not today he just dikembe matumboed me in front of Tia <laughs> no, 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 no 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 in my house <laughs> uh Demon do you have any questions for our runners uh I just wanted to go ahead and cover this so uh Gouda you're you uh you're in here you you got you unfortunately took the loss here um you're what one and one now you got one race left yeah, I gotta take on a fiend of pub session who is getting better every day. So you know, I gotta keep keep sharp, and we gotta hopefully schedule that this week sometime. And Chan again, you now you you've swept it out. You're three zero. Uh, it's time for some sixty four thirty two practice. Oh yes, uh, I'm gonna practice this all weekend. That's for sure. So yeah, our tournament right now, uh, a couple three zero runners, but of note, we have three of the members of the previous Duck Derby at 3-0 and right now, and a couple more who could still make it there. So we got Pizza, yourself, and Dead Pulse, all 3-0. Uh, so definitely some uh, Duck Der Duckling Derby success stories. And uh, we'll have to see. Yeah. Are, are you guys exchanging strategies, or are you all one for <laughs> all, nah. all in your own? Nah. Eh, well, 
that boss did give me some tips uh, for <laughs> the uh, 6432 round, so uh, we may, we never know. Goody, you can, you, you can blame Dead Pulse for your loss, officially. I, I'll blame Dead Pulse for a lot of things, but not this <laughs> one. This one I blame, um, I, I said I wanted seven hits on the Vorpal, which is what exactly when I stopped on the eye. And if I would have stopped at like 36, that would have mm. saved me two minutes. Mm -hmm. So like, it was, it was literally a couple extra levels maybe would have made a difference in time. It, I might have lost against Warmech again. Uh, you know, RNG in this game. Um, RNG is one of the reasons why, you know, I, I rage quit a lot of things in this game. Uh, Fall League, man. Fall League had me so tilted. I think I played like three seeds since Fall League until Spring Tournament came around because I'm like, F this game. This is this RNG is awful. But it, it can't happen to everybody, so it has to happen to me. <laughs> Fair enough, and I guess on that most rando of rando thoughts, uh, that, that summarizes FFR in a nutshell. It's not always like this, but it's always like this. Uh, let's let's move into our final thoughts. So let's let's pass it over to Chanigan here. Any final thoughts as you move into the brackets? I mean, you can already give it, but anything else that you want to say before we sign off here? Yeah, just GG Gouda. That, that was a pretty good match, I think. Uh, I'll need to rewatch uh, what you did differently than me, uh, just to get some tips uh, here and there. And I want to thank you guys for commentating, uh, for everyone in the background doing restream tracking, and uh, RPG Limit Break for uh, for hosting us. Awesome, awesome. Uh, passing it over to Gouda. Any kind of final thoughts here? Well, this is the Iron Gold Pod. I'm the Iron Gold Commish, and uh, I guess I'm gonna have to pass that torch on to Chan again. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's the Iron Gold Pod winner. Uh, took it outright, three and zero. GG to Chan again going to be one of the top seeds coming up in brackets. Uh, I'm going to be taking on Fiend of Pub Session here before the end of the tournament and uh, hoping to get that 2-1 uh, record so I can also stamp my way into brackets and uh, maybe run into Chan again again and get my uh, revenge. Mm -hmm. But likely, I'll, you know, I'll get Dead Pulse and then I'll just get Waffle Stomped and it'll be great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, these these ducks, uh, if, if, you're, if you're new here, if you've been watching this, uh, this new crop of ducks has been amazing. Uh, I I blame Gregly Puff and Ale Markin for training these ducks way too well. These ducks are all so good. It's amazing how much faster all these new runners are um, than us vets. So, I mean, if you guys want to learn, come on out. We have some amazing teachers. I'm sure these ducks will help you out as well. I'm always available and a lot of other people are as well. And this is a super welcoming community. We're all willing to help each other out and, uh, you know, have a little friendly rivalry and it's all in good fun. And it may an RNG, uh, may it always be in your favor because it's never in mine. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I've been Jad. I think it's been great to hang out. I wanted to thank once again, our restreamer loaded the synth. I wanted to thank our tracker, uh, John for doing a fantastic job. One of his, uh, first couple times doing solo tracking, he did a great job keeping us up to date with all the skills spells and everything else that's going on in here so our you know poor fragile commentator memories can can make it um it was a great race really a pleasure something i was looking forward to all week watching this one and it really you know lived up to the hype so with that i will pass it over to demon rhk to take us out of here thank you jack so uh, once again uh give jet a follow give all of our uh, crew here a follow as well as both runners and the performance they put on for you uh thank you very much to rpg limit break for letting us host our tournament on their channel please check us out uh both on the final fantasy one randomizer discord as well as the website where you can also find a link over the tournament page check the current standings uh we got more randomizer action coming up for you later tonight we got an 11:59. we got a red eye going on this this late uh later this evening make sure you, if you want to tune in to some more randomizer action take a look at that but other than that, I want to, I have been Demon RHK. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. We wouldn't be here without you and have a great night.